Good morning, monkeys. Happy Sunday, happy Easter, and happy Passover for those of you that celebrate. And uh, here we are with our next video uh, for you guys. We've got a little bit of a different video here today. I had a request uh, from one of our viewers on how to build a building and do it where you could highlight pieces or kind of lock into place uh, the second floor, third floor, fourth floor as you're building out your walls and floors. So that's what we're going to do for this video here as we're uh, demolishing our monorail building and putting in our monorail. Now we said this was going to happen. We were waiting for the monorail to be uh, quote unquote invest, uh, invented uh, in the game. So we're just deleting this stuff out now and uh, we're going to set it up so that we can build up from here. Uh, one thing we were looking to do, or I was looking to do for this particular building is create a very uh, large staple building, something that you're going to, you know, again, see, you know, it's a monorail building. It's going to look like a train station-esque kind of feel. We're going to have a tower on the top and that's the intention here. So we're building out our exit ramp and entry ramp for the monorail here now. And then I believe, yep, this is where we start building in our walls. And we're deleting these little quarter walls here as well. Uh, this was something that, uh, again, you want to just make sure you have a nice clean palette to work with. All right, so as we go in, I want you to pay mind to the right side of the menu options here for the different wall pieces and different uh, scenery pieces we're going to be putting in. And you'll see that there's that little white circular button that keeps popping in and out of the frame there. And that's going to be what, that's going to be the tool that we're going to use in order to lock in, quote unquote, where we're placing our walls and our floor pieces. And you can see right now it's just the arrow up. Uh, and that's the initial um, icon that you're going to have on that button when you are placing scenery pieces. So now, now that we come in, now I highlighted the square and you see how it's down on the bottom there. And what I do is when that button is yellow, okay, it means that whatever square you highlight, if there's a wall piece there, it's automatically going to jump on top of that wall piece, whatever you're looking to place. Now, if, or when, I'm sorry, you've gotten the wall piece now hovering, quote unquote, and you place it, you'll notice that that button changes to a target sign. Now that target sign is essentially what we're gonna use in order to lock in exactly where on a three-dimensional plane or on the, uh, that axis, we're gonna put that piece of scenery. Here I was struggling a little bit and getting it to lock in. And again, it's, it's trial and error uh, and trying to get it to work. But there we are. We've got now that base layer in. You know, I had a little bit of trouble kind of figuring out the direction I wanted to go with this building too. I noticed uh, a couple of challenges I had in putting in those canopy pieces versus the wall and roof pieces. So you're going to see that there are some changes that happen in and out. All right, here I am, I clicked on that yellow, the white circle to make it yellow. I highlighted the square I wanted to put, that terrace piece, and then it automatically put it in place and I locked it by building it. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, so sorry. All right, so now, um, if I'm correct, uh, yeah, I was just setting up. Right, so we're gonna have the canopy uh, go throughout the inside of this entrance as well. Or the canvas tent, I should say. And again, this is in regular motion, right? So it's taking a little bit longer than normal. Uh, but that's, that's okay, that's what we wanted. So we can take it nice and slow and show you exactly what we're doing. Now we're going to highlight the piece that we're looking for. Now, this is again me trying to figure out exactly what we want this to look like, right? So 
you'll see right now, up oh, the target's yellow and now it's white. So when it's white like that, it's gonna automatically put the item that you're looking to place flat. So if there's a walkway underneath, it'll put it exactly four spaces above that walkway. Okay. If there's nothing there, it'll put it flush to the ground. Um, sometimes you'll see, like when we were doing our rock work, we were trying to place the pirate ship. It wouldn't place the pirate ship. It said, this is not an unavailable space for, place for you to put this item, right? So then what you do is you click on that white circle and that button on the right side of that menu. And what that does is that will then make it hover over anything that you wanna place it. So, and like we were talking about when we were building out the pirate section uh, in the last video, we had the black trellis work underneath that scenery piece or that theming piece. Uh, so what we did was there is uh, covered up with, you know, little shrubberies and whatnot. All right, so now you'll see, as we're kind of building this this side out, uh, and, and I think if I'm correct, I come back and, and I delete out these walls, yeah. Uh, because what we're gonna do is we're going to put in uh, windows. Now pay mind to this, I think this is pretty cool. This is exactly how to do it. So it's gonna move it up. We're gonna move it into place by pushing that yellow button. You're gonna see it goes to the target. We click the target, the target turns yellow. We click on an item at the level that we want to build whatever we're building, right? So that's the key point. So once the target is highlighted yellow, that means your target is active, okay? And you click on a scenery piece or a ride or an item or anything at that level that you wanna build at and it'll automatically click it on that level. So kind of like in Planet Coaster, if you've ever seen anybody building Planet Coaster, they, that um, blue plane or the blue square that builds out as you're building on a second or third or fourth level, that's the same type of idea without the blue square, right? So your item will not move up or down no matter what square you click it on, you'll build it at that height. again, here's me trying to figure out exactly what we're gonna do here. And I actually like the direction we took with this uh, in building out this side of the station. Oh, I must've been thinking really hard there. <laughs> and you see again, you know, you see it move up and down and, I'm, and as I'm clicking on those arrows up and down to move the, the item up and down exactly the height that I want it at. And once you place that first item, you could then click on that target and then click on that item and it'll only automatically lock every single item that you want to place after the fact at that level. Just like that, you see there? Now everything is locking in at that level. So no matter where, what square I, I click on, it'll be at that height. And there's me getting stuck in a square, which happens a lot. I, I tend to get stuck in a square. And what I like to do is I actually use a stylus. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me to maneuver around the uh, field of construction, whatever we're doing, right? So I use a stylus uh, in one hand, I use my fingers in the other. I, my right hand basically is the direction is the direction of my left hand is the target, right? And when I'm kind of moving around. But you know, do whatever works best for you, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, so then here we are. Again, still trying to figure this out. I wound up deleting all of this out again. And the reason why we did this in slow motion uh, flow for you guys, or slow motion video, or regular motion, I should say, is because we wanted you to see it in the process. Now pay mind to the buttons on the right side of that menu at the top, because Every time you see them click, like right there, boom, right now I just made a target and what I did was I clicked on exactly the height I wanted it to be on, which was on those two other rooms across from the, the canvas. And then I built out the, the rest of the way. All right, uh, so as this is going, I want you guys to just keep in mind of this, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on in industry news. So uh, yesterday, 
I had mentioned on the video that I posted yesterday that Dorney Park had announced, not announced, excuse me, they had put in a plan, a potential building plan to the county of Allentown, Pennsylvania to build out their new coaster, um, which was going to be, uh, from what we're seeing, a ZDT, a ZDT-esque uh, switchback from Gravity Group uh, at 100 feet tall and at... Um, 103 feet tall, excuse me, versus the one at ZDT, which is 65, right? So what we did was we kind of managed that all day long. And then when the meeting rolled around, the virtual meeting, it was pulled off the agenda. So I'm wondering if they forgot that they had put it into planning and then decided to remove it off, if it got canceled by Cedar Fair. So there's definitely a huge question mark kind of floating around right now with that. Um, and I hope... You know, to be frank with you, I hope they do go forward with it. I've been dying to get on Switchback down at ZDT, and I think that uh, Dorney Park is going to have a really good new coaster if they get this one. I think it fits the, the family park. It's a family th family thrill park, right? So we're talking rides that are like, if I were to give a scale of 1 to 10, maybe 6 or 7, right? Uh, as far as intensity goes, for the most part, they're really not like a major, major, you know, intensity thrill park, you know, like a King's Dominion where most of those rides or many of those rides are like a, a nine, 10 in intensity. Uh, if we're talking uh, planet coaster, uh, not planet coaster, uh, roller coaster tycoon level, uh, gauge there. Right. So that's that. And then also, uh, posted this morning on YouTube, which I thought was pretty cool was the construction update for Jersey Devil here at Great Adventure. It's Six Flags Great Adventure. Super excited about that. It looks like they've gotten the roundabout uh, finished on the opposite side of the coaster uh, where they were working. So they've got one, two, three, four, five elements done already on the coaster, which is great. But now where the big concern comes in, and, and I'm obviously going to stick close to the forums today and kind of see what they have to say, but uh, I'm curious to see what happens with the whole construction. If it, obviously it's not essential, right? This isn't an essential construction project, all right? So all construction that is non-essential has been halted. So does that mean Jersey Devil Coaster is not gonna get built? You know, that's the big question mark that we're all kind of like, oh my God, what's gonna happen, you know? Um, yeah, because to us, everything that has to do with a new coaster or a theme park is essential, right? But uh, it's a bit of a different world out there lately with everything that's going on. So we'll see what happens, you know? I'm definitely gonna check the forum today in my next video that I post. We'll see what comes up. Uh, at this point, I think we've got a video going up almost every day now. You know, I'm playing pretty aggressively with the RCT, so I'm gonna make sure that these videos are going up on a consistent basis. If not every day, every other day, uh, but damn near close to it. Uh, damn near close to every day. I'm moving so far ahead, I've got so much footage already of what I've built in the park uh, and kind of, you know, building that out for you guys. Really love the direction that the pirate theme section is going and taking some super stoked to show you guys that. But uh, yeah, no, this is where we see the building start to finally take shape. And it's kind of where I get excited a little bit. So built out this wall here, we were going to have it open so that, you know, quote, unquote, your guests on the monorail when they're going through the station could look out. But we kept it as a covered terrace. You know, you're really not going to be able to see that anyway. So what we did was is we built out a sloped roof all the way around. Now, see, again, you see I clicked that circle button there, turns into a target. I, I identify the height I want to go after and boom. Now everything's boom, 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 all the way across. Right. I don't have to worry about resetting the height every single square. It's automatically set at that height. So much easier. All right, and now we're gonna build the slope out the rest of the way. And I love the way the, w the rest of this train station came out, like I was saying earlier. And this was me, kind of, I needed a break. You know, when you need a break from, from a project that you're doing, it's like, ah, I need to breathe. And then you come back into it, right? And jump into it, that's what happened there. All right, so now we just locked that into place. You saw how easy that was to lock that into place? And no matter what square we put it at, it's always gonna stay at that same height, which uh, again, so much easier 
uh, way to build. And you think about RCT originally, when it came out, you had to adjust the height every single square, every single side. It was such an arduous process, whereas this is just so much easier now. I love, see now watch this here, and I love this. So what I decided to do was, we've got the sloped root all on the one side, right? Now coming from the castle uh, section uh, back into the main plaza, you know, what, what you're looking at is this building with these two flat facades with open windows, this way people as they're coming up the stairs or down the exit ramp uh, can look out over the castle area, which I think is a really great vista. And then we're gonna put in, in the center here, another terrace. Uh, but what I thought was, what if we created that very quintessential center spire, if you will, for a train station, right? So that's what we started doing here as we built this out. And again, we, we're going to put in the circular windows. And again, there goes the cross. We hit that target. We, hide, we, we click on the height we want to go after, and then we put it in the square where we want it. And there I was going to put in the roof. I was like, no, let me put the wall in first to make sure I have the right height. There we are. We go right back to that canopy. Canopy goes up. It's just so pink and white. Very Florida. <laughs> I should have threw some teal in there too. Give it a very Miami vibe. Speaking of Florida, oh my goodness. So... I read yesterday the progress on the uh, Velocicoaster, Velocicoaster, Velociraptor Coaster, I believe it's the Velocicoaster, um, in Universal Studios Florida. Uh, it's gone vertical. We're looking at some really great, uh, it's either Premiere or Intamin. I'm going to guess that it's a Premiere ride. That's my gut. It looks like Premiere Track. Uh, again, we've got no spec, uh, specs on the ride whatsoever. As of yet, we've got a rough layout, but that's really it. You know, I can't wait to see what this coaster looks like. It looks like it's gonna be pretty intense. Looks like there's a massive top hat that comes up over the water on the opposite side of the lake. So on one side, you're gonna have the Incredible Hulk that just juts out over that water. And on the opposite side, you're gonna have this huge top hat that comes up. Again, not sure on any specs. We don't know the height, uh, but based on the length of the track, it looks like it's longer than Hagrid's and way more intense. There's definitely gonna be a couple of inversions in there, which is gonna be great. And I think what this is gonna do is it's gonna take uh, the place of what doing dragons was for the park. You know, where's that intense, you know, enthusiast ride? You know, that's what this is. This is an enthusiast ride. It's not a family ride. This is a ride made for enthusiasts. And that's what I'm stoked about. And here we are, just talking about the video again, getting back in here. Looking at me locking it into place again, instantly locking it right there. As we move up two spots, finish up that roof. Now, I was gonna close off the roof there and then this just drove me nuts. I could not I could not look at those four things poking out of the top there. So what I wound up doing is created a, another little tower, almost like a bell tower off to the side, which I thought was a really cool look. It's got a very, I wanna say Adobe type vibe to it, or I think very, you know, uh, Midwestern generic, not Midwestern, I'm sorry, Southwestern generic, right? Like Adobe building. I think very SoCal. All right, how cool is that? It just locks right into place. Right, so we're gonna click our next item, watch this. Click it, and boom, it's just it's at, that, at that height already. Just makes it so much easier. And then I changed, boop, see, and there we go. Now it's at the next height. So it's automatically gonna try and lock it in that, that height. Now if you connect, if you click on the same exact line, the same location, it's gonna give you the next possible height because you've already placed the wall there. So it's gonna put it right on top of it, right? Now 
Now here's something that's interesting. When you click another item, let's say you're going from a wall piece to a roof piece. Now watch what happens. You see how it hides the roof on the inside? So it's in the same square that you've chosen. And what it does is it takes the roof piece and it automatically puts it at the lowest level of that four section meter. Now how can I explain that better? Um, each cube, if you will, is four, four units high, four units across, right? So what it does is it'll put it on the bottom of the four units. What you've got to do is move it to the top of the wall piece. But there you are. That's the end of the video there. Uh, I hope you've gotten something out of it. Uh, don't forget, check out Coaster Monkey Studios on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and obviously YouTube. Thanks so much for joining and a happy holiday to all of you out there for those who celebrate. Have a great one.